Hey there YouTube and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be diving into a topic as intriguing as it is terrifying, that is syphilis. But this isn't just any talk about syphilis, we're going to be delving deep into the three stages of this sexually transmitted infection, from having a simple rash to going totally insane. But did you know that syphilis has actually been around for several centuries? It's believed to have originated in the Americas before Columbus's voyage in 1492, after which he brought it back to Europe. Talk about a souvenir. Now, it was most common amongst prostitutes and sex workers, and so those who were afflicted with this disease were often stigmatised for how they made their livelihoods. Famously, Al Capone actually suffered from syphilis, and he suffered from the third stage of it, which is what made you totally insane, and this might have accounted for some of his escapades whilst being involved in the Mafia. And although medical science has moved on from the times of Al Capone, there are still 6 million cases reported worldwide each year. Now, before we get into the nitty gritty of the three horrific stages, Let's recap what syphilis actually is. So syphilis is caused by the bacteria called Trepomona pallidum, and it's usually transmitted through sexual contact. And unlike other bacteria, it's neither rod-shaped nor spherical, but rather it's more corkscrew-shaped, which helps to allow it to infect other cells. And also, interestingly, unlike other bacteria such as E. coli that can survive on surfaces for several days, T. pallidum can't and can only really survive in the human body. Which ultimately means that humans are the main cause for this bacteria being able to stick around for the last 500 years. Now, appreciating the fragile properties of T. pallidum as a bacteria, we can understand that it can't really be spread by air droplets or just by regular close contact. And due to its specific living conditions, it has to be spread through intimate contact on specific surfaces of the body. And in this case, intimate contact includes things like kissing or sexual activity where the mucosal surfaces of either the genitals and mouth come into physical contact with one another. And the reason why T. pallidum likes to use this specific route is that it's equipped with an enzyme that allows it to break down collagen and enter your body. And if we look at your moist membranes, they tend to be soft, thin and less protected, making less of a barrier to the T. pallidum entering your body. Whereas if we were to look at your skin, your skin tends to be rough, thick and actually has an acidic lining that can help to break down the T. pallidum bacteria. So now, let's get ready to explore the dark journey of syphilis as it progresses through its three spine-chilling stages. So our first stage is where the horror begins, and it's otherwise known as the primary stage. It's like the opening scene of a horror movie. Picture this, a sore called a chancre appears somewhere on your body, and this is normally located around the genitals, the rectum, or around the mouth. This sore might appear harmless at first, but beneath its innocent exterior lies hundreds of colonies of the treacherous T. pallidum, and if touched, are highly infectious. But here's the scary part. If left untreated, this seemingly harmless sore will disappear, but the infection will not. Instead, it continues to spread around the body and move on to our next stage, the Creeping Menace, aka Stage 2. Now, interestingly, a feature about T. pallidum that allows it to evade your immune system for a long period of time is down to its slow replication rate. You see, T. pallidum replicates so slowly that it actually keeps the population of the bacteria in your body below what's called the critical antigen mass. And you can imagine the critical antigen mass is the number of antigens of either a bacteria or virus that must be present to trigger a response from your immune system. Now, let's move on to stage two. So guys, this is the point where things get seriously spooky. Picture this, another rash appears on your body, typically on the palms of your hands or the soles of your feet. 
But wait, there's more. Fever, raised lymph glands, and possibly even a sore throat come in to join the party. It's like in a horror movie where the villain begins to show his true form. Now, unlike in primary syphilis, these lesions over your skin tend to be extremely painful and are also highly infectious. But here's the kicker. Just when you think that this nightmare might be over, syphilis unleashes its final form. Stage 3, the terrifying conclusion. Stage 3, guys, is the point of no return. By now, the infection has been in your body for several years, wrecking havoc on multiple organ systems. The consequences? Devastating. We're talking neurosyphilis, cardiovascular syphilis, and the horrifying possibility of both disfigurement and even death. Let's take a closer look. You see, once reactivated, the T. pallidum bacteria chooses to affect an oddly specific part of your body, your blood vessels. And infection of your vasculature or your blood vessels causes chronic inflammation, which causes large growths to appear of inflamed scarred tissue that we call goomas. Now, goomas can range in both size and shape and lead to grotesque disfigurement if they grow large enough. But this is only one of the complications of having an infection in your blood vessels. The other is where these blood vessels are leading, and the main two areas that suffer the complications are both your heart and your brain. You see, inflammation within blood vessels causes calcification, or the buildup of calcium within the blood vessel walls. This calcification makes your blood vessels more narrow, which reduces the blood flow to your organs, meaning they get less oxygen and nutrients. Now, specifically looking at your cardiovascular system, the T. pallidum bacteria chooses to infect your thoracic aorta, which is the largest blood vessel in your body. And the calcification process causes this artery to narrow, meaning that you get a reduced blood supply around your body. Also, due to the chronic inflammation, the thoracic aorta becomes engorged and enlarged, which we would otherwise call an aortic aneurysm. And it's an accumulation of all of these vascular insults that leads to a reduced function of your heart, which can subsequently manifest in palpitations, fatigue, a heart attack, or possibly even heart failure. But how does T. pallidum then move on to affect your nervous system? Well, you see, the central nervous system is also damaged by this vascular inflammation, which can go on to lead to someone going insane. You see, nerve cells have a very low tolerance to being starved of oxygen. And even a small reduction in oxygen can lead to your nerves becoming damaged or even dying altogether. Now, in tertiary syphilis, where there's likely to be widespread vascular inflammation, where your nerves are receiving less nutrition, the nerves start firing sporadically, which can lead to a level of paralysis, which is most notable in both your eyes and your limbs. And within the brain, specifically looking at the amygdala and the prefrontal cortex, which are normally involved in your emotional regulation and your logic, begin to deteriorate. This goes on to affect your memory, your interpretive functions, as well as causing a change in your personality and possibly even manifesting in hallucinations. Now, in the past, such patients would often have been misdiagnosed as having a psychological problem or going psychologically insane. But in reality, it's actually got to do with the brain gradually malfunctioning due to the chronic inflammation of your vasculature, which is killing off the nerves in your brain. And unfortunately, often, if patients are misdiagnosed and don't receive any treatment, they'll die from the complications of either heart failure or the neurological side effects of syphilis. Now, I know that all sounded pretty horrific, but modern medicine has come a long way. Thanks to the discovery of antibiotics in the 20th century, syphilis is easily treatable, and its horrifying stages are totally preventable if you receive that treatment in a timely fashion. So the next time you're feeling unwell, just remember it could be worse. You could be living in the 15th century with no antibiotics in sight. 
Thanks for sticking around, everyone. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more fascinating insights into the world of medicine. And until next time, stay healthy, keep smiling, and I'll see you all next time. Thanks. <laughs>